All right, kids, here we go. So today I'm actually going to show you how to take a stereo file and convert them so that the left channel and the right channel are their own individual mono files. And the reason you would do this is because when you're generating a multi-channel MXF file for broadcast, they need to be mono files because the stereo effect is actually done by master control at the station level on the playback server. So they have their own process, so you don't actually have to worry about it. But in order to get there, we need to make sure that our stereo file is converted. So let's get started. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to click on the File menu, and then we're going to go down to the Import menu, and then we're going to hit another File menu. Yeah, I know. So the Control-I if you prefer. So we're going to click on that. And you can see that I have an SOC1 underscore FIN. That's my stereo file. Now, I've already generated these files uh, for myself, but I'm going to show you how I did it. So here's my stereo file here, and I'm going to open that. So now you can see that I have my stereo file like so. And you can tell that it's a stereo file because the left channel is on the top and the right channel is on the bottom and it's in one file. So that's how we know that this is a stereo file. But how, you might ask, do we convert this so that we have these two files separated, or these two channels separated, I should say. Well, it's extremely simple. So we're gonna go over to our file, file name here, and we're gonna right click on it, and we're gonna hit Extract Channels to Mono Files, which is the third from the bottom. So now it's gonna do it. So it's extracting the channels. So now you can see what it's done is it's actually generated two new files, basically. So it's actually already determined how many channels there are in it, and it's created a mono file for each of them. So right now I have a left channel, right, because there's an underscore L at the bottom of it, or at the end of it. So if I double click on that, you can see that this is a mono file right here. And if I double click on the right file, you can also see that this is mono. And you can tell that it's the stereo has been converted into mono and it's been done correctly because the waveform is slightly different from the left to the right. So you can see that the visual waveform is a little different and the levels are a little different depending on what it is. So you can see that this is very much the same. Uh, well, the same in the sense that they're mono, but different in the sense that they're slightly different waveforms from both channels, and that's what we want. So now we actually have to get this to a file because, well, without it actually being a file, you can't use it, which is, of course, useless. We don't want useless. Useless is bad. So we are going to actually export it. So what I always like to do is I like to start with the left channel first, just because... It's nice to go in a linear fashion, and it makes it a little easier when you're just trying to keep track of all your crap. So we are going to go to File again, and we're going to go to Export this time, and we're going to go to File here, which is Control-Shift-E if you prefer. So we're going to click on that. Now what we're going to do is we are going to export our file. But there's a couple of things we have to do first. So first we want to make sure that our format is a WAV PCM. So we want to make sure that that's a WAV file. The other thing that we want to make sure that we do is that we change the sample type so that it's mono. So if you haven't done this before, and if you're watching this, you probably haven't, this will likely show up as stereo. So actually, while we're talking, I'm just going to change it to stereo so that it mimics what you see when you go into it. There we go. 48,000 hertz stereo. So I've deliberately made this wrong so I can show you how to make it right. So the way that we do this is we're going to go into change. So you can see this little button on the right here. And I'm going to click on it. So my sample rate is always going to be 48,000 hertz. Okay. So this is not going to change. And my channels, I am going to want to change so that it is mono. We don't want it to be stereo. The other thing that I'm going to do for broadcast is I'm going to make sure that my bit depth is 24. So here's my bit depth here at 24. And now I'm going to hit OK. 
because broadcast is usually 24 bits. It can sometimes be 16, usually for ingest you're looking at a 24-bit file. And the format settings are okay, so we're just going to leave that. So now you can see that it's a mono file, the file name is okay, and the location is okay. I'm able to save this file where I want it. And now I'm going to hit okay, like so. Now obviously I've already made this file, but I'm just going to overwrite it just so you can see that I've done it. And I'm going to hit yes. You will have a new file, so of course we'll not ask you that. And just for the sake of repetition, which some people find annoying, but it's, it's good because it helps you internalize what you've just learned. Yeah, I know, I sound like a fucking teacher. We're gonna go to the right file, the right channel file, and we're gonna do the same thing. So I'm gonna double click on map, and I'm gonna go file, and then I'm gonna go export again, and then I'm gonna go file again, or control shift E, as I say, if you prefer. And we're gonna click on that. Now it remembers, that I wanted mono. So you're not actually going to have to change this back in all likelihood. But just in case it does, for whatever reason, because sometimes Adobe does what it does, we're going to hit change. Just make sure that that's mono and not stereo. And if it is stereo or something else, or even same as source, just to be on the safe side, we're going to bypass and make sure that it's mono. So I'm going to click mono. I'm going to make sure my bit depth is the way I want it which it is, and then I'm going to hit OK. So that looks OK. It's where I want it. It's the right hand channel file, and I'm going to hit OK. And again, I've already generated this file, uh, so it won't do this for you, but I'm just doing this just so that you can see that I've done it. So I'm going to let it go. And now it's created that file. And that's it. That's really all you have to do. Now, if you've gotten this far, you might be asking, why in the hell do I have to go through all this trouble to make a stupid stereo file, individual mono files? Well, I'll tell you why in a little more detail because uh, it helps provide some context. It's like went over it a little bit in the beginning, but I'll go in a little bit more detail here for those that are interested. So the way that multi-channels work for broadcast and the reason that they're set up that way is so that the levels are easy to control and the playback is actually handled at the stations themselves. So when you have a, a stereo file and it's going through a playback and you have multiple channels, there's no way to separate it and make sure that there's quality control for each individual channel. So the way that the playback system works for ingest at the TV stations is it's a lot easier for the server to have individual mono files. It also makes it easy to replace if you need to change something. And the panning, the left and right and all that is actually handled at the station level by the automated playout server. So this is why it's mono. So what happens is when you have an eight channel file, which is usually what you're going to be providing to the network. So say left and right might be channel one and two, then you're going to have a mono file for left, you're going to have a mono file for right, and then the station will pan that to minus 100 and then plus 100 for their respective channels. And that is the main reason why it's done. It's just easier for control and that process can be automated. Now, this is great because it helps quality control for files that are played at the master control level. And it makes quality control for TV a lot easier, both for the stations and the production companies. And it generally makes things just a whole lot higher quality and it's, it's easier to make sure that everything is playing back the way it should because then if something isn't working right you can usually go back to one channel rather than have to go into a stereo file and do troubleshooting so it, it, it streamlines the process I had a professor that used to say take the long shortcut because the long way usually tends to be shorter and uh, when it comes to troubleshooting that's absolutely the case although this isn't a very long process it's, it's easier to do it this way and uh, you know you'll be glad that you did the other thing that I, I wanted to go into a little bit uh, from the television side of things is it's a good idea, and I always say this in all my videos, it's a good idea to know how things work 
and why they work at the television stations the way they do. Because if you understand how something is put together, you're able to make it easier for the station so that you're remembered as the guy that was easy to work with and wasn't a huge giant pain in the ass and that you respect the process of the stations that you're working with. So when you need something, you might need some extra publicity or you might want more air dates or whatever, they're a lot more likely to want to help you out if you made their lives easier, right? Because your show isn't the only one and your commercial is not the only one that you know these folks have to, to play on the television stations. They have hundreds of these all the time and they're constantly dealing with production companies that are argumentative, that don't know how files are supposed to be put, uh, or the captions are wrong, or the uh, you know, or the audio is wrong, or just the whole bloody thing is just wrong. And then they argue, and it just you know, believe me, the stations have seen it all. I used to work at a television station, and you wouldn't believe the kind of crap that you know, we had to put up with. So now that I'm working in syndicated television, I know everything that pissed me off. And so I didn't want to be that guy. And I had no excuse to be that guy because everybody that I'm working with knows that I used to work in that. Uh, and I'll also go into a little bit, uh, I'm going to tell you a little story uh, about a post company that was a real pain in the ass. Um, so we have to run advertising in our show, as most television stations do. And because Skycron is also an ad agency, we are responsible for a lot of our own ad buys. When you see the show on TV on ABC or Fox or, or CBS or CW or whoever. And we had a client that was... I guess, trying to function as somewhat of an agency, and they were using this post house in New York. Now, generally, the post houses in New York are extremely good, right? They've been doing this a long time. But New York is big, and this particular post house, I don't like to talk yell about, uh, you know, other companies, but put bluntly, these guys were a bunch of idiots and had a completely shitty attitude. Anyway, all of our television commercials uh, have to be multi-channel and this is a pretty much a universal standard. Now some stations are a little bit more lax with this than others which can give shitty post companies the idea that they're doing it right when they're doing it wrong and I can tell you that at the master control level we would get files wrong from the same companies all the time. We'd get supposedly multi-channel files that would have stereo files in, embedded in them or they weren't routed properly or they just didn't work you know and you'd have to go back to the original company and say hey look it's wrong and then you'd get in our arguments and, and whatever and a lot of the time we just put, wouldn't put it to air like that but sometimes you just go ah you know what whatever well this company um, outside of Vegas actually and they were using a, a post company in New York and this company in New York had sent us the spot and it was just it was completely and totally wrong they did not route properly and it was just a huge mess and I knew that the reason if this was how they were sending these files is they would be sending them to the stations and whoever was working in master control just be like oh, you know what it'll be faster for us to just fix it ourselves than to go back to these idiots and, and get it done properly. We'll just do it right ourselves. And what happens with this, and I, I'm guilty of this too, is that the post company that fucked up, if you'll pardon my language, never learns that what they're doing is wrong. Uh, and I'd done work in, in three different countries delivering different formats of commercials. So I sent a polite email to this, this post company in New York and said, hey, listen, you know, just so you know, I know you have a lot of stuff on your plate and so do we, but these files are, are wrong. They're not eight channel MXFs. You know, you put a, a stereo file in here and it's, it need, they need to be individual mono files. Uh, and I was doing it to try to help them out. So instead, this company comes back and starts arguing with me and my staff and, ah, you don't know what you're doing and blah, blah, blah. 
And I turned around and said, listen, you know, we supply the largest networks in Europe and North America, and you're doing it wrong. And you are going to go and you're going to do this properly. Otherwise, it won't air. And they basically came back and started swearing and, you know, you're this and you're that. And I actually ended up basically taking their entire contract and just ripping it up. I just said, you're done. Oh, well, you're unprofessional and this and that. It's like every other network on the fucking planet knows how to provide a proper file. And, you know, if you can't figure out how to do this properly, it's not my problem if the individual television stations were too nice to tell you that you fucked up. But you fucked up, you're a fuck up, and you're a fucking idiot, so fuck off. I didn't put it quite that way, but that was basically the long and the short of it. So being nice, unfortunately, doesn't always do you any favors because there are some post companies that are now under the impression that because they send a file that's stereo that goes to air like that is the correct way to do it simply because nobody told them that it was just quietly being corrected at the station level. And so they get defensive when somebody that's been on both sides of that tells them that it's wrong and they end up acting like a bunch of children. And I'm going to remember that. And television is a small world and I'm never going to work with that company again. And I understand they've lost a few clients. And so if they manage to last more than a couple of years, which I'm not sure if that's the case. So this is why I say you want to be, be the guy that makes things easier. Because if you're remembered as the guy that's argumentative and whatever, you know, it, it's, it's a small world out there. And it's, as I say, not only is it good to know how things are supposed to be done, just it's, it's good to know how things are done, right, for your own understanding. But it also helps you be the guy or girl that's reliable and has is remembered for having it been done correctly. So this is why I say it's really important to do it properly. And if you do it this way, which is very, very simple, this is, you know, the way that uh, this is the way that you can do that. So that's my little story. It's a little long winded, but it gives you the uh, general idea. But that's how it works in terms of uh, taking a stereo file and converting it into two mono. And in the description below, if you're curious about how to do a multi-channel MXF, it's there. And uh, for those of you that might be coming here from the multi-channel MXF tutorial, now you know how to take a stereo file and uh, convert it into two mono files. So hopefully this helped you. Happy television making and have a good one.